Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're building a media cabinet that will house an entertainment system and a PlayStation. Because we recently switched from having a projector to having a TV, we need to move all those things that used to be close to the projector close to the TV. And there's nothing close to the TV now, so we'll have to build something. It's gonna be a relatively simple project, but I figured that would be a good opportunity to show you guys some cool tips and tricks that I use when building cabinets. So thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, so I spent a little bit of time making drawings for this project. For simple stuff like this, I usually just draw them by hand. For more complex stuff, I would have probably modeled it in 3D first. So I started off by measuring both the location where the cabin is going, as well as all the components that are going inside of it, so that I know that I build it to the right size. In addition to that, I want to make sure that this fits my future needs, and more specifically, the new PlayStation, which looks like is going to be enormous. So I've based all my drawings for this thing based on measurements I could find for the new PlayStation on the internet, and we'll just hope that it fits when it actually comes out. Okay, let's have a look at this. So this is the front view that I've drawn up with all the measurements and I've drawn it to scale so that I can see all the right proportions. So this whole thing will consist of a regular frame, a door in the front that opens like this. This is gonna be the stereo thingy. This is the enormous PlayStation thingy. And then I've allowed some extra space on the sides for the hinges that we'll be using. And I've also drawn up the thickness of the boards that I'll be using, as well as the way we're gonna assemble this whole thing. Then I've also drawn up this view. This is the same front view as the big drawing, and this is the side view. So using all these measurements, we can now make a cut list, grab some material, and then cut out the parts. All right, let's cut out the pieces. And just like that, we've got all our parts cut. All right, let's get started. And yes, just like that, I changed sweaters because it's now actually a couple weeks later from the previous clip that you saw. Oh, and by the way, if you like that sweater that I've been wearing in this episode so far, you can check that out in my new merchandise store, link in the description below. There's t-shirts and sweaters and hoodies and a couple of different cool designs, as well as a limited edition t-shirt that will only be available until the day I reach 110,000 subscribers. So make sure you're quick and go check it out. All right, let's see how all this actually goes together. So we're basically just making a simple box, right? That leaves us with six sides that need to come together in some way. The front I haven't cut yet, so we don't need to worry about that for now. So I've got two of the same pieces, which is gonna be the top and the bottom. And then the main piece here is gonna be the big outward facing side, which we're gonna put here for now. And then since this is gonna be a pretty narrow and deep shelf, as well as it's gonna be up against two walls here, I actually cut the back wall out of MDF because it's basically never gonna be visible anyways. So this thing will go back here and then we can put the top on to get the general shape of the box. So the wall that's gonna go here is the only one that's gonna look a little different to the other ones because it is basically just this strip of wood which is gonna go right here. Because when this thing is mounted up against the wall, the only thing that you'll be able to see when the cabinet is closed is this front edge which leaves me with all this room to make a nice solution to hang this box on the wall. And we're gonna do that with a French cleat system. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with what a French cleat system is, it basically just consists of two pieces of wood that are cut at a 45 degree angle each. So one of the pieces is attached to the wall and the other one to the cabinet. And when you then slide the piece that has the cabinet attached to it on top of there, it will automatically slide in place and kind of hold itself securely up against the wall. It's actually the same system that we used when we attached the stairs to our kitchen that we built. So the way this is gonna work is that we'll attach one of these 45 degree angle pieces to the space that is available in the back of the cabinet here, and the other one gets attached to the wall so that when the cabinet with this 45 degree angle attached to it slides all the way up against the wall, making for a really nice and easy install. So I don't want any visible screws or anything like that to show on the finished piece but that doesn't mean that we need to get super fancy on how we attach all the parts together. 
because there's a lot of places where the screws aren't gonna be visible. Like on the bottom or the back side, I can just use screws and leave those visible because they're either up against the wall or too low against the ground for them to ever show. But in the top here and on the sides where I don't want any visible screws, I'm gonna use a lamella machine and join them together with lamella biscuits. So I'll do that in just a second, but before that, we need to get rid of this ugly visible MDF edge and we're gonna cover that up with some nice looking oak edge banding. And for that, a long time ago, I made myself this board here, which has just a couple of strips of wood with the right spacing so that I can put one of these boards in there and it will just hold it upright, that's all it does. <laughs> you definitely don't need this board, it just makes your life a lot easier. So edge banding is basically just a thin strip of wood veneer with hot melt glue on the back. So here's how you do it. You take your piece of edge banding, cut it with a pair of scissors to a little bit longer than what you're gonna need. Place it against the edge of the board and then melt that glue with a uh, ironing iron. <laughs> this is an old experiment where I modified uh, iron I had at home to get it to be a little bit hotter. I wouldn't say it worked really well because now it gets super hot and it burns the wood if I hold it in place long enough. If you're gonna do this, just use a normal iron, it will work just fine. The trick here is to just try and melt the hot melt glue and get it to stick like so. I have this piece of pipe that I use to push it down super firmly. And that's basically it. We'll let this cool down and then we'll cut off that little lip at the end and then we've edge banded the board. Oh, and when I still had everything assembled before I took everything apart again, I just marked off all the sides that need edge banding. That way I don't get confused and accidentally edge band some wrong edges. And when it comes to edge banding, it's always best to apply the edge banding before you start assembling pieces. It's much easier to do now than when you started assembling pieces and screwed it together and you need to try to cut out in corners and it's just a mess. So that was one side edge banded on all the parts that need edge banding. <laughs> so the next step is to get this little lip off and for that I'm gonna show you a little trick. And that trick is to use a planer blade, which has one side that is completely flat and one sharp edge. If you don't have one of these old planer blades laying around, you can also use a metal ruler with a relatively sharp edge on it. And the way this works is that we're just gonna start by breaking off that little edge in the front here first. And then we're gonna use our planer blade, kind of like a pair of scissors, and shear off the edge of oh, our edge bending here. You see that? Super quick, leaves a perfect edge, a little bit of sanding, and we're done. So now we just do that to all the edges that need edge banding. A couple of these boards will need two of the edges edge banded. And once all that is done, we can start thinking about assembling. This really goes super quick. All right, so all the edge bending is on. I've sanded all the edges and everything looks really nice. Next step is to make markings for where we wanna put the lamella biscuits. And the way I find it the easiest is to just align everything properly like you want it to end up and then make some markings for where you want the biscuits. That way you don't need to measure anything, but everything will still line up perfectly. I'm gonna put a few biscuits here as well. And then on the joint between these two pieces, because we can't screw in from that side. One, two, three, four. We'll put one in this one. And for the French cleat piece here, we want to have a couple in that one too. And the good thing with the lamella biscuits is that they're a little bit adjustable sideways, so we don't need to be super accurate with these. All right, let's start lameloing. In case you haven't seen this thing yet, it's basically just an angle grinder with a blade in it that will cut a slot that will fit one of these wooden biscuits. Ta-da! And now this thing fits in there. Okay, so that was all the lamella biscuit holes done. We can basically start assembling it now. 
but we want to make it a little bit easier on ourselves when we go to install this. So I'm going to drill a couple of holes first. One of the holes is going to be a big one like that in the bottom here for the cables to come up through from the bottom and then into all the stuff that's going to live in here. The second set of holes is going to be into the side piece here and those holes are going to be for the hinges that we'll install. Normally I would just drill these after the fact but in this one it's so narrow that I'm not sure it's going to be super comfortable to get the drill in there. So I'm going to do them now. All right, everything is sanded, let's start assembling. I forgot this lamella hole. Damn it. And that's why you test assemble everything dry. This would have been way more stressful to fix if I had already started gluing things together. All right, so now that the remaining biscuit holes are fixed, it's time to put in some screws. So I've just assembled everything. I've used a couple of clamps to hold stuff in place. Now I'm just gonna make sure that the edges are aligned here and then drill and screw in some screws. And I'm using the countersinking drill bit that I talked about in my last video. It also helps if I assemble it the right way around. Got lucky this time. No harm done. All right, looks good. Now let's do it all over again, just with glue. Doing it this way might be a little bit more work, but it takes all the guesswork out of the glue up part. So now I know everything fits together and all the screw holes will align all the parts. So I don't need to worry about clamping everything in place correctly because when you glue stuff, the glue is slippery. So parts have a tendency to slide a little bit. Time for some biscuits. Biscuit, 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 biscuit. Okay, I might have gone a little bit overboard with the amount of biscuits in here. I'm sure three would have been enough on each side. All right, so I'm really happy with this. So while the glue dries, I'm gonna make the door. All right, look at this nice looking black piece of Velcro mat which I'm gonna use for the door. It's all cut to size, it's sanded. I made nice chamfers on the edges with my shoulder plane. And now I just need to make some holes for the hinges with this bloom hinge drilling jiggy thingy. Ta-da! That's the door done. Let's get some oil on all these parts. Okay, now the finish I'm gonna be using is Osmo oil. This is the stuff I use for like 99% of all the finishing things I do. This one in particular has a little bit of white in it and that is just so that the wood turns a little bit less yellow and is closer to its natural state like it is now when it's finished. So it just goes on like this and then after five minutes, I'll just rub it off with a piece of paper. And if you're interested, I'll leave a link to the exact oil I'm using down right below that like button. And that's it. Doesn't that just look amazing? <laughs> so it's the next day, everything is dry. It's time to install the hinges. And these are bloom hinges that will fit perfectly into these pre-drilled holes. These specific hinges are the 
kind that just snap in place so you don't even need any fasteners. Just like that. And now this door literally just snaps in place. And I've also installed this little push open thingy in there so that I don't need the handle and I can just have it push open. All right, let's go install this. Okay, so we're in my living room. That's the new TV and this thing is gonna go in the corner here. Let me show you how easy this is gonna be to install. All right, so literally all I gotta do is take my French cleat piece of wood here with the angle facing in towards the wall. I've already marked the height that I want this thing and I've pre-drilled a couple of holes for some screws. Screw in the first screw and then I'll use a level to make sure that the entire thing is level. Screw in the second screw and that's it. <laughs> that's literally all I gotta do. It's time to hang it. <laughs> oh my God, that worked so well. It's just perfect. <laughs> it's really sturdy. <laughs> I'm really happy with this. All right, so that's it. This thing is finished and you know what? Everything actually fit inside, just like I planned. All right, so I ended up actually drilling a tiny little hole in the top to feed the wires for this little speaker through. And I still have to do all the wiring and the wire management for all the stuff that's inside of here. That's gonna take me quite a bit of time though, so I'm not gonna make you watch that. So for now, I'm just gonna say thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It actually makes a huge difference if you do. If you like the sweater I'm wearing or wanna check out some of my other merch, there's a link to that in the description below. If you're not yet, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell so you get notified every time I upload something new. As for now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. This is Steve-O.